Hello everyone. Welcome to CU Denver's Finance 101 training for student organization officers and their advisors. This video will recreate the virtual training conducted in late August for those groups starting mid-year or just needing a refresher. This training is not a registration requirement, though we will cover the steps to register and become fiscally active. It is also directed at registered student organizations and department-sponsored organizations, as smaller meetup groups are not fiscally active and university-sponsored orgs have staff supervisors to oversee their budget. My name is Lance Glungs. I have served as the procurement coordinator of student life and campus community since 2017. I track our various office budgets and help with programmatic operations across the department, including purchasing for clubs with campus accounts and fulfilling funding proposals approved by student government. I may also coordinate with other campus offices on co-sponsored purchases and delegate expenses using Student Life's own funding information. I'll note here that I am a true middleman and oversee no budgets of my own. While I may carry out transactions for your group, I am seldom the ultimate approver. For this reason, we ask that officers communicate their fiscal plan with Student Life's weeks before an intended event date and follow up afterward on any required reconciliation details. Let's dive into those policies for club procurement. First, CU staff must consider the test of propriety when organizing any fiscal activity for the university. These eight questions identify the transaction's feasibility and business purpose or learning outcome. I have rewritten those test questions here in a club context. If the answer to any question is no, one should expect to revise their planned expenses or have the request denied outright. Fiscal staff must also justify their work via expense reconciliation on the back end. We each assume liability for expenses made until they receive administrator approval and finally post to university accounts. The slide here lists many of the reconciliation details required for student functions. Most are gathered beforehand in MyLink's request forms, while others, like event attendance, must be provided by officers after the fact. Student Life uses two sets of categories to classify recognized organizations. The first set was created this fall to better describe clubs' day-to-day -day relationships with the university. These clubs vary in their requirements for good standing and the amount of support provided by CU Denver. We will skip over them today, but I will note that registered student organizations and department-sponsored organizations are those eligible for SGA funding and would have any campus accounts overseen by student life. Underlying these categories is a fiscal classification of groups via policy 7029, affiliated and associated. Affiliated groups are created on campus by CU Denver students and recognized under the university umbrella upon registration. They may use CU's tax info and finance system and must manage funds through CU if they are fiscally active. The CU Biology Club is a great affiliated example. In contrast, associated groups are student chapters of local or national organizations which would manage their funds externally. As of fall 2019, clubs of both fiscal categories are eligible to submit student government funding proposals. Please contact Student Life if you have questions about your club's status. We will help you identify your needs and take steps towards compliance if necessary. You may be thinking, okay, Lance, we get the basics, but how do we use our money? Club officers may become fiscally active by following three easy steps, register, train, and finance. Organizations which are not recognized in the current academic year may not be fiscally active, including those awaiting approval, or who haven't transitioned from previous years. Upon registration, officers will be provided access to the MyLinks admin dashboard by our student orgs team. Club leaders should then complete step two, the 2021 online officer training. This Qualtrics, Qualtrics test will teach you about relevant CU policies and expectations for internal student life processes. I check these records daily for new submissions and would then add permissions of the finance module to your admin dashboard for any relevant groups. A visual guide to those steps is represented here. New clubs may register using the MyLinks homepage's Create Organization link 
or the organization registration form in general. Officers of returning clubs may instead resubmit their registration using the upper right pencil icon in their group's admin dashboard. Step two, online officer training, is found in the MyLinks homepages resources tab. Lastly, the MyLinks Finance module itself will appear in the leftmost toolbar of officers admin dashboard once permissions have been granted. All right, so you finally have access to MyLinks Finance. Now what? The finance module will be your one-stop shop for all things budget, request forms, pending proposals, transactions starting this year, etc. Here we see an example from an affiliated organization. Students who serve as officer to multiple clubs may see another page before this one. Their budgets can be found in its funding committee dropdown. The main feature to highlight on the page shown is the upper right create transaction menu, which serves as both a notification to student life staff of your needs and a digital checkbook ledger. There are three important transactions in this menu, deposit, allocation, and expenditure. Each one initiates a new MyLinks form for that exact purpose. The Create Deposit form is used by student life staff to record revenue as it posts to accounts. Officers may also use this form to notif our, notify our team of expected revenue, though its posting may be delayed. Next, the Create Allocation form is used specifically to submit funding proposals to Student Government's Finance and Funding Committee. If approved by the student representatives, you will see the award total appear in your club's MyLinks available funds. Please note, SGA approved expenses will be purchased directly from their budget and funds will not actually transfer. This is also why the module's transfer transaction has been deactivated. Lastly, the Create Expenditure form will be used to request expenses from a group's own account or those approved by SGA. Student Life would then follow up for clarification if needed and arrange expenses that are approved and feasible. Student leaders should not make purchases on behalf of their group without written approval from Student Life staff. Before we move on, let's return to club revenue. Student organizations are permitted to fundraise by collecting membership dues. Officers of affiliated clubs shall make timely arrangements to deposit that revenue with Student Life. Other fundraisers, such as percentage nights, donations, and sponsorships, will be submitted to Student Life in advance for documentation and to confirm feasibility. For example, we should have expectations for a sponsorship agreement in writing before payment is made. Likewise, club donations should be processed through the CU Foundation in order to provide gift receipts to donors. Our current remote campus and office closure has stopped our ability to accept walk-in deposits. Therefore, we ask that officers with revenue email the Student Life account for deposit arrangements. Our options currently include an on-campus with meeting with staff by appointment, shipment to essential staff in the provost's office, or electronic payment of donations via the CU Foundation website. There are several funding opportunities on campus for clubs seeking financial support. As we have discussed, all registered student organizations and department sponsored organizations are eligible to submit funding proposals to SGA's Finance and Funding Committee. Each group may request up to $3,000 through May for virtual events and conferences and $500 for promotional items like club shirts, stickers, and tablecloths. Proposals are received by SGA student representatives for review on Friday afternoons and requests over $250 require a remote presentation to the committee. Requests should be submitted three weeks before an intended event date to ensure time for review and procurement. A new bylaw from last spring also requires sustainable purchases of approved items. Your executive team may choose to stretch these requests over several programs or throw all eggs into one basket for a single grand program. Two or more clubs may also submit requests together in order to pool funds and expand their programming possibilities. Other campus funding opportunities include the Community Action Grant, 
for $250 toward at-home community service, the President's Diversity Fund, or $1,000 towards pro programs promoting diversity across the CU system, and CU Denver Live, or $1,000 towards large events targeting the campus-wide community. CU Denver Live has suspended these proposals given the ban on in-person gatherings, but will restart when campus policy allows. All right, we've made it this far without really addressing the elephant in the room, COVID-19. CU Denver switch to a remote campus last March has created significant changes for procurement, both in the types of expenses approved and the procedures used every day. A suspension of all in-person gatherings has eliminated many of our most common club purchases. Room reservations, event supplies, catering, and travel. While our options are limited, Student Life continues to preach our word of the year, adapt, and offer flexibility to officers wherever possible. In fact, there are many feasible expenses which can help meet your group's mission in a remote environment. Please contact Student Life for an advising session if you need any assistance revising traditional events for our current climate. Please note that some expenses require more steps than others, so active communication is key. For example, electronic gift cards are now allowed where they were once prohibited, but gift card programs require signed approval from both the Provost's Office and Procurement Service Center before purchases can be made. In general, it is in your best interest to leverage student life resources and communicate early about your event plans or concerns. If you have follow-up questions on this video or would like to schedule an advising appointment, please contact one of the student life team members listed here. You may also check out the events page in my links to find out when the next treasurer workshop is being offered by student organizations. I look forward to collaborating with you and wish you a successful semester. Thank you for joining.